Hey everyone, Bernard here and I hope you're all staying safe and well welcome to my latest Citizen Channel feature. Uh, please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button and push the bell notifications as well so you know when these vlogs are coming out and uh, of course do lots of stuff, city past and city present, so uh, please push that uh, notification button. Make sure your notification is set to public as well, don't forget, although otherwise you won't get to know, but uh, press that subscribe button. Please check out my links on screen as well for uh, Facebook and Twitter and also don't forget I've got a little film and TV channel on YouTube as well so if you want to have a little break from football check that out and of course uh, on Facebook and Twitch I will check every few days and follow and friend everyone back on there and also don't forget I have a, I'll have a sort of links with losing business on Twitter they promote uh, city fan related small businesses local businesses which need our help perhaps more than ever these days don't they so please don't hesitate to get in touch with me if I can promote or put some stuff out for you in, on one of my uh, magazine vlogs my city magazine vlogs and don't forget I'll always give a shout out to Lovejoy local projects or charities etc etc just get in touch anyway please enjoy today's today's citizen channel feature thank you today we've got another episode of keeping city safe yes so we're going to have a look at some of the great goalkeepers join our wonderful history at city uh, we take a look at some of the very best uh, we take a look at some not quite as good uh, all those in between they got the odd record breaker and stuff like that. So we're going to take a look at keepers. Today we've got a pretty a local lad actually. Who, uh, his mum used to live in Withington, not far from where I lived uh, for a long time. And I believe uh, I was told this later on that I used to actually play. I was about three years older than this guy. And we used to play on the local park. And I believe he actually used to join in the games. But I don't remember personally, but I was told that later on. So I've actually played footy with him. We used Because we were older, we used to just sort of... We couldn't catch the little buggers. So we used to kick him, to be honest with you. But uh, he's a bit, he was always a big lad. So I might not kick, I might not kick this guy. Uh, <laughs> I'm not too sure. I mean, in the echelons of great key keepers, he possibly's not up there. He's possibly not up there near the top. Uh, uh, but for a number of games, uh, quite a number of games, he was responsible for... Uh, keeping city safe and we're gonna have a look at eric walter nixon oh you know we'll forget the walter we'll just call him eric nixon hey, for, for the purposes of this thing uh to describe his time at city as a bit of a, a roller coaster is perhaps a little bit of an understatement to say the least uh he walked into main road on in september 1983 uh not far from me to say he walked from withington if not wasn't far he used to walk to the matches all the time from where i lived uh so he walked in from withington sim simply asked for a trial and i mean obviously city were a little bit desperate at the time so uh yeah he had a trial he did okay uh, in december uh soon it's so december 1984 he joined city from curz and ashton which is where he'd been playing and we also later uh, played a friendly we paid him a grand a uh, grand total of a thousand pound then we also played him a friendly match to earn some more money from as a as a thank you as well they were in the northwest counties league at the time he quit his job as a car valet, so there you go, don't know how good he was at that. Uh, and despite an early failure to make it at Bolton, he was at Bolton a few months and they sat the manager and there was no real real room for him. But uh, he uh, he had a chance at least to carve out now a pro career at one of the biggest clubs in football. Because let's face it, City were. He actually went to uh, Wilburn High School, a lot of my friends went there i actually went to parswood high school but uh yeah he was there and alex williams also went to uh, wilburn high as well so some good lads went there roger palmer didn't he go to wilburn anyway what happened next well alex williams yeah he took over from joe corrigan he played about 112 consecutive games uh unfortunately he picked up a little injury to his toe uh he would later obviously have injuries uh, a bit harsher uh, on his back, obviously a bad back, uh, certainly a curse of many goalkeepers for City over over the years, picking that ball out of the back of that net. But uh, sadly for Alex, of course, his uh, bad back would that uh, would halt his career at just the age of twenty six, so not very good. But uh, yeah, it wasn't his back that. Uh, to cause Mr. Nixon to step in. It was it was a problem with his with his toenail, and it, I think uh, Eric calls it an ingrowing toenail. This little piece I'm going to read out for you in a minute. So on Saturday, twenty first of September, nineteen eighty seven, he stepped between the sticks uh, for the Cannon League Division One game against West Ham United. Uh, he played over sixty games for the reserves. The reserves weren't a bad team at the time. We had quite a good youth uh, youth team and a few good young players. And City with Billy McNeil at the time of this game against West Ham sat 14th. Uh, 
uh, although all the, the fans actually sat second in the attendances league behind our illustrious neighbours across the roads, but ahead of the likes of Arsenal, Liverpool, Tottenham, Chelsea, but small small club city, you know, we we sat second in the in the crowd uh, crowd figures, although we'd had the derby, so that had boosted the average up a little bit, but. Uh, Anyway, in the league we sat 14th, we sat second in the crowd to attendances. West Ham sat above us, uh, just one place above us in the league. Uh, and anyway, over to Eric. I mean, he explained his feelings in, in this later match day programme when he was speaking to Colin Evans. He got, went on to say, Billy McNeil was a the manager then and he told me on the Thursday that I would be playing. I think Alex Williams had been the number one choice. I'd had problems with an ingrowing toenail and that gave me the chance. Of course, I was thrilled about it and I asked all the family and friends to come along and cheer me on. They were all there, even my mum who doesn't really like football and if I remember right, it wasn't a bad game, a 2-2 draw. I made a couple of decent saves and when I came off, all the relatives would congratulate me, but when it was time to get off home, I realised that in all the excitement, they had shot off in their cars leaving me behind uh, one of them was supposed to be giving me a lift but I'd obviously forgotten so my great day ended up for me walking back to my mum's house in Withington it wasn't far mate was it uh, still gave it still it gave everyone a laugh Eric's next game was a few days later as away uh, cup tie against would be giant killers Berry who chose to play at Old Trafford yeah he wanted a bigger crowd it wasn't that much bigger than they would have got at Berry unfortunately uh, rather than Gig Lane where the crowd would be restricted the Shakers played some good football and gave City a tough fight and they would have gab grabbed a draw but for a dra dramatic late save by Eric yeah, by himself it was a free kick and Trevor Ross hammered it he said it was a great shot but I just managed to get a hand to the ball that save underlined the potential of a goalkeeper who had walked into Main Road in 1983 saying gives a job uh, Eric had made a big name for himself in Sunday soccer circles, uh, Sunday soccer circles even, particularly with a team called Mersey Lights and had also impressed with Kurz and Ashton, but he desperately wanted to make it to the top. I was 21 and thought my chance of being spotted was fading, so I decided to take matters in my own hands. I was living in Withington, not too far from the ground, so I just walked in one day, introduced myself to Ken Barnes and asked for a trial. Since then I've been told that City had been interested in me, but I didn't know that for certain at the time. Yeah, I think they'd been to watch him. Anyway, they were very good to me and gave me a game in the reserves against Barnsley a few days later. I stayed in the reserves side for a few months and then played in a friendly against Stockport County and performed well. Possibly that display helped convince Billy McNeil that I was good enough for the first team and could step in when Alex was injured. Luckily for me, my chance came quickly after that. It was nice that all my family could watch my debut, even though they made me walk home. Oh, bless, bless him. Yeah, I mean, there have been a couple of other chances before uh, Alex injury where he nearly got to play, but he didn't quite do it. Uh, of course, as we know, Alex took over from the legend Joe Corrigan, didn't he? Uh, but by the third, by his third game against Oxford on the 28th of September, Billy McNeil was making a little note of the, the odd error. Yeah, he wasn't happy and a, a nervousness that was well, it's surely to be expected from a new keeper. Uh, Eric com commented himself that he'd been happy with his early games and the pace was much quicker than the reserve team level had been pay playing. And his experience had caught him out. But in his own words, he thought he'd, he'd, it wasn't disastrous. It had not been disastrous for him in those first few games. Uh, his actual stint at number one would last to the end of March 1986. So he didn't do too badly, did he? Uh, in that time, he was star man three times. Uh, a full members' cup area semi-final against Sunderland on November the 4th when City went through 4-3 on penalties. Perhaps, perhaps he saved a couple. A uh, full members' cup area final first leg at Hull at the end of November. A 2-1 loss we did win the second second leg obviously to get through to that Wembley final didn't we we won at home 2-0 of course to set that up and after Billy McNeil was less than impressed with his performance on February 1st in the league game at Main Road against West Brom, he sort of redeemed himself with another star man performance in the next game as nil-nil draw in the FA Cup at Watford on February the 3rd. But yeah, the cracks were showing. Billy McNeil wasn't totally convinced uh, that his young and experienced keeper was uh, sort of up to the job. And he was losing a little bit of patience. Of course, the 5-4 uh, defeat at Wembley soon followed, didn't it? Uh, which obviously didn't do too well. He was oh, you couldn't 100% blame Eric, of course, but uh, it, it wasn't great to see. Uh, so in came... So, yep, yeah, so the manager changed things up. He made, he made he sort of sorted things out. He sort of brought in one of my personal heroes as a goalkeeper who used to go go to bed in gloves and, and take his football to bed with him. This is according to his wife. I'm not too sure how, how true this was. But, yes, we, we signed John Cleese. 
Sorry. Oh no, sorry. Uh, Barry Siddle. He did, did have a sort of a like of uh, John Cleese there, didn't he? Uh, he was actually in the reserves at Stoke at the time. So uh, yeah, Billy McNeil had, had enough um, of uh, Mr. Nixon's uh, Nixon's uh, sort of inadequacies. Let's let's say. Let's be kind. He's, he's sort of played a lot of games. He was getting perhaps he was getting a bit tired. I'm not too sure. But he uh, he said he brought in Barry Siddle to take some pressure off young Eric. Still young Eric. He's only he's only a young lad at the time. But yes, uh, when Barry's uh, loan expired, of course, uh, Eric did manage to get his place back and played in City's last game of, the, of that season on the 3rd of May versus Luton Town at a 1-1 draw. Uh, but but yeah, into the eighty six eighty seven season, it was almost a, a total washout for Nixon as far as Manchester City were concerned. Uh, McNeil left, Jimmy Frizzell took over. But Eric spent almost all of that season out on loan. Uh, and of course, City had a new keeper on the books, so Mr. Perry Suckling. Yeah, another. Uh, whether we'll do one of him one day, I'm not too sure. But a new keeper, Mr. Perry Suckling, was on the books. He'd been loaned out to uh, Fourth Division Wolves. Uh, this is this is Nixon during this season. He'd been loaned out to Bradford City of the Second Division. He'd replaced an injured Peter Shilton at Southampton in, in the First Division that season. And he also went to Carlisle in the third division. So he actually achieved the, the great thing there. I think it is a great thing of actually playing in all four divisions in the, within one season. So that wasn't the first, second, third and fourth division. So that wasn't bad going, uh, which actually meant there was even time for Jimmy Frizzell to put him back in goal for City as he played the last five league games. He won two, lost two and drew one. Unfortunately, we sank back into Division 2, didn't we? So he didn't. it's not, not particularly Eric's fault, but it wasn't the greatest time, was it, as he brought him back uh, for those last handful of games and sadly City lost the first division status. Uh, things looked a bit better the season after, though, at the start of the 87-88 season. We had another new manager, yeah, Mel Machin was in charge. Uh, and I think uh, in Division 2 I'd seen enough to, to start uh, Eric Nixon in front of uh, Perry Suckling, I say, that had been involved in this. And he, he actually started the season in the home game against Plymouth Argyle. And it all went well for a further seven games after that. So he started the first eight games. But, uh, yeah, he got a bit of the blame again. He got a bit of the stick uh, from Mr Machin for a late goals in a in a Wolves game on the 22nd of September in the Littlewoods Cup second round first leg. So he got a bit of stick for that. And yes, uh, Mr Machin didn't mess about as his predecessors hadn't messed about and brought in Bobby Mims. Bobby Mims, another one from, from Everton on loan. So both Suckling and Nixon, Nixon were now uh, vying for reserve team games to play. But... There you go. Strangely enough, in the programme notes of that Wolves game I just mentioned, uh, Machen had actually been singing out the praise of the defence, which included Nixon at the time, for keeping three clean sheets. So it took one one poor display against Wolves for him to be kicked out and a new new goalkeeper to be sought. But say uh, that's obviously perhaps runs a little bit deeper than that. But by early October, uh, Nixon was again number one as Mims was recalled by Everton due to a keeper crisis of their own. So there he go, he adapted well, had a good run. Um, he actually got a sending off. I mean, City had, went on a good run of victories, uh, an unbeaten run, sorry. Uh, he actually got sent off in a game against Crystal Palace in early January, a 3-1 loss, but he lost it. He basically lost it and a few other players did that day, but it's obviously uh, Nixon got uh, sent off. Uh, I think Steve Redmond went in goal from memory there. And of course, he would miss uh, a couple of games later. He'd miss a couple of games through suspension. But because uh, he'd been doing that so that well, when he did uh, serve out his uh, his actual uh, suspension, he came straight back into the first team and uh, Suckling, Suckling went out back into the reserves. But as ever, as ever, so with Machin as well, he's a bit of a fall guy, and this time it was Machin who took him out of the firing line as mistakes happened. But it wasn't Suckling, but City turned to another one, another keeper we brought in. We used to love keepers, didn't we? Uh, we turned to Everton again, but this time we took a, a keeper called Mike Stowell from him. And uh, that, that he would feature in the biggest match of the season, of course, uh, with promotion almost destined to be out of reach that season. We'd play Liverpool in the FA Cup quarter final at Main Road. A uh, crowd of over 44,000 that day on the 13th of March, 88. Sadly, it was a 4 0 loss, but uh, yeah, he didn't, Eric didn't didn't respond well to this, and he actually put in a transfer request that, um, to, again, put Mel Machin's nose a little bit out of joint. He wasn't very happy, but you can read, read between the lines in his programme notes. 
Uh, but he would actually then again return to return as he did a couple of seasons before for the last game of the season. Uh, obviously, with the long keeper having to go back again, a, a, an away match at uh, Palace at the last game of the eighty seven eighty eight season. But but he was during that spell out where he'd asked for a transfer. He'd actually had a loan period again, but he'd had a loan period at Tranmere, which became quite important uh, to Eric Nixon certainly for his future. He'd actually gone to spent a, a couple of months at Tranmere and done a very very good job there. But that 87, that game at Palace, that game, the programmes there, I think, in the background, that game would be his last uh, uh, for Manchester City in, in a competitive game. Uh, and it would see Nixon leaving to join Tranmere. So he did loaned him, he'd had a good good spell there. So he joined Tranmere at the end of July 1988 for an estimated 60,000. So not bad for a, a £1,000 keeper, was it? For uh, get 60 back on him, uh, three or four three, four, five years later. And, of course, he would give up his job at Main Road as the number one and uh, finally give it up forever. We, we would not see him again. Certainly not in a competitive game. He may have played a charity match or two. I'm not too sure. Happily, though, for Nixon, as far as his, him going forward, he had a fantastic run. He played, made over 400 appearances for Tranmere as he went from the fourth division to the brink of the first. I think they lost out in the playoffs. And he's still, to this day, as far as I know, as far, according to Wikipedia that I just checked before I came on here, he still holds their clean sheet record for the most clean sheets in the season as well. So he found his niche, didn't he? He found his spot there, I think, with Tranmere Rovers. As for City, well, I mean, after after Nixon had gone, we, we, we sort of struggled through the next season or two. We had people like Dibble, didn't we? We had Andy Dibble, we had uh, Cooper, we had Paul Cooper came in, didn't we, as well? So, yeah, uh, our goalkeeping problems would, would sort of carry on a little bit. OK, let's face it, Eric Nixon, he will not be known as City's best ever keeper, of course he wouldn't. But he did obviously have talent. Um, it was a City side struggling, don't forget, uh, different managers, uh, a lot of youngsters, a lot of young players. And it, uh, you say the, we needed a bit, perhaps a little bit more experience at that stage. Obviously, Kendall started to put that right a little bit, didn't he? Then followed by Reid, of course. But uh, at that stage, it wasn't the greatest time. It wasn't the greatest time, perhaps, to be a City player as, as we did struggle, really, didn't we? Let's be honest about it. And the pressure. So it doesn't matter whether we're in the first division or the kind of league first division or second division or whatever we were in those three or four seasons that Eric was there. Uh, the pressure was always immense at a club like City. He was only a young keeper, and, and obviously he did go on to Tranmere and, and find some some reward. I think for for his keep, and I think he did play for two or three other teams after Tranmere as well. So all credit to him. He made a total of eighty four first team appearances for City in all competitions, including a little trip to Wembley, wasn't it? So it's not too bad. All right, didn't turn out very well, but it didn't turn out very well for many of us, did it? But. Uh, I think he, I think he did an okay job, Eric. He, he, he did as best as he could, which is all you can say. Is that that's all you can say about players, isn't it? As long as he put in a hundred percent, all right. You know, at the end, by the end of the time, he'd put his transfer request. And who can blame him? <laughs> who can blame him for that topsy turvy time he had as a keeper at City? And uh, that was absolutely fair. I'm not, I don't think any City fans hold that against him, and I don't think many City fans would have any bad words to say about about him. He certainly did what I'd call an okay job. Uh, of keeping City safe. Anyway, thanks for watching. All you got to do the rest of the day, have a great one. Catch yourselves, catch your friends, look at your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. To we meet here again on the Citizen Channel, or perhaps I'll reflect across. Have a look at my film and TV channel. I only ever ask one small thing from you. Stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.